Greetings folks, um, here's another little video for you which is um, about ultra low power again and uh, this is a bit, of, a bit of a revisited topic and uh, I've just set something up here which is uh, something really as a response to um, how you could use a microcontroller to display on an LCD screen really low power but um, this is a direct connection to the LCD, this is not through a, um, a driver chip or anything like that, this is the microcontroller directly driving it. So um, I'll just uh, zoom in a little bit and we can have a look at the what I've set up here. And I'm making a bit of a bad job of this, aren't I? I'm not going to eat into the frame. There we go. So uh, as you can see, we've got a counter there and um, that's the. I've got a little button that I can press, and each time I press it, miraculously, it, it goes up. Okay, so all well and good, and uh, that's quite happy. But um, one of the things was we were looking at something which would take uh, under two microamps of of power. So uh, with that, I set two, and I thought I'm sure I can do this and uh, so that's what I did. Now what we actually get is, um, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll be able to see the current uh, the current current which is 740 nano amps. So this is a micro amp with the, in the first three digits and then the nano amps are these next two and of course the, the units of the nano amps is dropped off the end and um, <clears throat> so this is showing 750 nanoamps at the moment and um, this is with uh, 3 volts so I guess if you did actually implement this you'd probably use uh, a lithium ion a button cell uh, so uh, that's uh, the setup now and the detail of it um, which I'm just going to present to you now which hopefully you'll be able to see there we go so in this we've got, looks like we're going to be over, there we go, I think we were over um, exposed there. So I've got a PIC 16LF1904 which is about, I think it's about a dollar fifteen in 1000 unit uh, purchasing. Again price was, was sort of on the menu here and um, this is the uh, 3 volt uh, battery, I'm using two double A's here. Um, and then we've got here an ammeter which is our, our Bryman thing here multimeter um, there's a little decoupling cap this is the pick there's a, an input which takes the button um, which uh, is a rising edge and every time you get the rising edge out of that this increments and there's another little thing here that uh, what it does is the count is actually stored in um, uh, high endurance flash so if the button cell disappears uh, you've still got the value in there so I guess I can just sort of show you that um, but before I do I'll just give you some ideas I think this primer is reading slightly on the high side and the reason I think that is because um, I was using an SMU which is which are these cables here um, but the SMU is is up here somewhere in the lab and um, couldn't really get a, a decent wide shot unless I sort of did of, sort of multi-camera so I thought oh, we'll use the Brime in for this it, it's, um, it'll just about work but I think this is this is reading around about 10% um, high on uh, on the low on the very low current ranges um, if I actually disconnect it You'll see that it's it's zeroed pretty good. Um, actually, this, this will show you something else. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I'll show you something that when we there we go. So when I remove the uh, power, you'll see that it's um, uh, gone off. And uh, then when I put the power back on again. I'm sure if you saw that but it fills up the display with A's that's sort of what it does when I set the software to do so we can tell that it has actually done a power on reset and then it uh, displays the last value so it gets that from the um, high endurance flash and um, if I just zoom out a little bit I'll show you what happens when um, 
when I actually changed the uh, the segment. So we're currently we're at 750 nanoamps and it's showing 97. Now if I go to 98, there we go. You can see there was a, there's a bit of a uh, it's a bit of four point whatever it was microamps. That was when it dropped out of sleep mode. So the microcontroller was in sleep mode. Dropped out of sleep mode. Um, updated the high endurance flash and updated the LCD with a, with a new value and uh, so you can see from there this is now at uh, 790 nanoamps and it, it, so it's, it's put a few more segments on so every time you add more segments you increase the um, power because of the LCDs you have to send it an AC signal and so you can th there's some capacitance in the in the segments in here and so the dissipation is basically the fact that you're having to charge and discharge the capacitor on the, the capacitance across these segments. Now these are measured around about ballpark 150 uh, picofarads on these particular uh, segments. I, I don't know, that could be accurate to plus or minus 50%. It was very much a ballpark. I did a, a CD, CDVDT uh, calculation on it and uh, that's what I came up with. So um, you can see that it went from 7, like 750 to 790, so 40 nanoamps difference from showing a 7 to an 8. So that's um, an additional 1, 2, 3, 4 segments there. Again, I wouldn't take this too accurately. When I did it on the SMU, in fact, if I refocus on here, on the SMU, I actually measured a little bit lower on the average. I measured about 700 and 700, maybe a little bit less nanoamps average. Um, and uh, also, it was about 410 nanoamps when no segments were on. And I was measuring actually less than this. I was measuring about 13 nanoamps per, per segment on. Um, a segment which isn't on um, takes virtually no power. It's just the switching of the uh, the segments on um, uh, the. the uh, segments here which uh, so it's a matter of nothing compared to the capacitance of having to uh, charge and discharge lots of these 150 peak farad caps which are each of the segments and yes, I'm using what's called a static method here so uh, this means that I don't have to use any um, complex biasing techniques um, or indeed anything uh, such as um, charge pumps uh, just run straight off the three volts here, and so to keep it the just mean, it means very sim very simple to uh, set up and um, configure. Um, when you start having multiple commons, so like a multiplex scenario here, you start having to have multiple different voltages and charge pumps in order to be able to maintain the different voltages for the multiplex, uh, because you're always having to send this AC. And that's okay, but it, and you, uh, but it's uh, there's a cost involved in that, and that is that charge pumps are not particularly efficient, um, and also neither are bias networks. Essentially, they're resistors, so they're going to dissipate energy. So as soon as you start talking about a charge pump and biasing resistor networks, you can you can walk straight out of these uh, uh, hundreds of nanoamps, and you're probably talking over a micro, well over a microamp, sometimes an order of magnitude difference. So that's the reason I've kept this static, non-multiplex thing. The downside is is you need stacks of connections. So um, you'll see on here if I uh, zoom in again on this. You'll see that it's um, it's not giving me an option to <laughs> to refocus, Joy. Okay, um, sorry about that. I'm doing this remote on a remote uh, setup. The stacks of wires. So if every single segment has to have a wire. And uh, and plus the common course, so that also means that you need a, a relatively high pin count device. I've used up every single segment output on here to get this to work. Um, there was only one segment output remaining, but that's how I'm going to use as a common. Uh, sorry, as a as a as a, a, a LCD voltage input because uh, of the way that the peripheral works on here. Anyway, there you go, that's just to show that you can get it to work and to get these uh, LCDs to work from a microcontroller in under a microamp. And uh, thanks very much for watching, it's appreciated.